Thank you, May. Thank you all for being here. This has just been, it's been so amazing to be here with you, to get arrested with you, to be part of this historic action. Louder? But there's all this feedback, is that all right? <laughs> Hold on one sec, we're fixing it. Okay, we're gonna keep talking, I have to keep talking. All right, I I let me tell you something. I wrote a book uh, 11 years ago called No Logo. And in the course of writing this book, I became an expert in corporate crap. And particularly the ways that corporations try to rebrand themselves. Um, and, you know, I feel like I know, and I've seen a lot uh, um, of, of, of crap that corporations are capable of. Like, you know, I've, I've studied running shoes that were supposed to lead to women's liberation and laptops that were going to start revolutions. And I studied the Beyond Petroleum BP campaign, but I have never seen anything quite as audacious as the campaign to rebrand the tar sands ethical oil. Do you know that Bill McKibben um, was on a debate with one of these guys on BBC and he compared the tar sands oil to um, fair trade coffee and free range chickens? Do you know that they're running ads on the Oprah network uh, saying that by buying tar sands oil, you're helping to free women in Saudi Arabia. I mean, I'm from Canada. And let me tell you something. We don't have ethical oil in Canada. We have tar sands oil, which is like regular oil, but a whole lot dirtier. It ravages the earth as it is extracted. Ravaging bodies, ravaging the land, as you just heard from our brothers and sisters from the Indigenous Environmental Network. And it ravages the earth at the point of combustion when all of that carbon, three times as much carbon, three times as much greenhouse gas is emitted than it takes to produce a regular barrel of crude. When all that carbon enters the atmosphere and destroys and threatens the lives and livelihoods of millions of people around the world. And it also threatens the earth when it is transported in pipelines like the proposed Keystone XL pipeline. It threatens waterways, drinking supplies, ranches, the land that people and animals depend on. Ethical oil is not an oxymoron. It's an outrage. It is an insult. It is an insult to the indigenous communities living downstream from the tar sands. It is an insult to the people who are on the front lines of climate change, whether they're people in Vermont dealing with historic floods, whether it's the people in the Horn of Africa facing historic droughts, whether it's people in island nations like the Maldives and Tuvalu facing cultural extinction, whether it's people living in countries dependent on melting glaciers like Bolivia, they dare to speak to us of ethics. So we don't have ethical oil in Canada. We also unfortunately don't have a government in Canada that is in any way interested in representing the interests of the vast majority of Canadians. The vast majority of Canadians care deeply about climate change. They say it again and again to pollsters. They show it with their actions, with the ways in which they've changed their lives, but it doesn't matter because of the tar sands, because it undoes all of the actions that we do as individuals, because our national emissions are still up 30% from the time we signed the Kyoto Protocol, and all that time we've made a mockery of that agreement and a mockery of international law. I know you Americans love to idealize Canadians. I know you do, let me tell you, my family, are actually Americans, and we moved to Canada during the Vietnam War. I know all about it. But our government right now, the, the, the conservative government of Stephen Harper elected with 40% of the vote, they're keeping the Bush dream alive. They're keeping the Bush dream alive. They don't represent us. They've decided that it is their job to act as the global advertising industry, the global advertising agency for the tar sands oil industry. They travel 
around the world selling their poison, their ethical snake oil. We used to pride ourselves on upholding international law, on raising the bar. Now we travel the world lobbying governments from California to Europe, pressuring them to lower their good environmental standards, their good clean energy laws to open up those markets to that toxic crud they call ethical oil. Do you know that our environment minister has used the phrase ethical oil? Get real about Canada, guys. Our government is so deep in the pockets of the fossil fuel industry that we know that we can't appeal to them to stop the tar sands. They've developed just 3% of the potential of this massive carbon fuel. And you know what? They won't rest until they have it all. So because we can't appeal to them, we need a strategy to strangle the tar sands from the outside. Yeah. We need to cut off the arteries that are fueling this monstrosity. First and foremost, the Keystone XL pipeline, which will never be built if we have anything to say about it. That's why there are so many Canadians here who are appealing directly to President o Obama, asking him to prove his personal energy independence, demanding that he use his veto to make good on his 2008 election promise to take the U.S. off the path of dirty energy, a commitment for which he won the Nobel Prize. It's time he earned it. <laughs> Standing with me, as you can see here on either side, are 50,000 Canadians who in just uh, three days or so signed a petition organized by Avaz calling on Obama to protect the world from our deadly oil and say no to the Keystone XL pipeline. <laughs> thing they're telling us. They're telling us that this will create jobs and how dare we stand in the way of jobs during an economic crisis because you know there's an economic crisis on. But here's the thing that we know. We know that the same economic system, the same economic logic that puts greed above all and liberates corporations to do as they pre please, that that same economic model that is threatening to crash the global climate system is exactly what crashed the global economic system, which is why we don't have enough jobs. Right. The Keystone XL pipeline will create jobs. Well, so will climate change. Yeah. It will. It'll create jobs cleaning up the rubble. It'll create jobs rebuilding flattened houses and schools. It'll create more jobs fortressing our borders as we try to protect ourselves from the climate refugees. Climate refugees fleeing from a crisis that we created with our greed and our emissions. We'll create some more jobs with climate wars to fight over the scarce resources. That's what happens if we keep doing exactly what we're doing, only more so. This matters because these historic protests that are wrapping up today and that we will continue in another phase in the weeks and months to come happen at the end of a long and painful summer of disasters, of floods, of tornadoes, of forest fires, hurricanes, record-breaking heat, parched earth, failed, crops and as we gather today new tropical storms are gathering and people are in that familiar state of huddling by their television sets wondering wondering if they will be safe we don't really have summers anymore we have disaster season and disaster season just seems to be longer and longer it was only last summer, it feels like a lifetime ago, that we watched in gape mouth horror as BP's oil gushed into the Gulf of Mexico from a hole in the world that has yet to heal. We are here because we don't want to live this way, careening from disaster to disaster. Whether that disaster is created from the process 
of extracting the fossil fuels when they spill or the ongoing, everyday, never-ending disaster that are the Alberta tar sands, or whether the disasters happen at a slight delay when we successfully burn those fossil fuels. We are here because we know that we can do better, that we do not have to attack our earth with ever greater violence in order to live happily and fulfilled. We know that there are energy sources based on renewing and amplifying life, not sucking it dry. And that on this path there are tens of millions of safe and dignified jobs, jobs that workers can be proud to go to every day. Jobs that the climate justice movement can fight for alongside the growing sector of the labor movement that has the courage to say no to dirty jobs and no to the Keystone XL pipeline. I say this to you on Labor Day weekend. Thank you for sharing Labor Day weekend with us. Let us labor with all our hearts for this new day. Thank you. Okay, our brothers and sisters are still doing their work across the street. Now it's time for us to do our work here today and to tell us exactly how it's going to happen. Where's Daniel? He's coming. He's coming.